You know how I'm always telling you, use even the negative parts of your artistic journey for your inspiration. Well, you know who does that particularly well? The summer of sophomore year, I started my YouTube channel because I was depressed. And I was like, I, my dad was like, you need a hobby? I said, okay. So I started my channel. And by the end of the summer, you know, I was making money. Emma Chamberlain used her anxiety and depression to fuel her creativity. If you could change one thing about that time in your life, what would it be? Nothing. I refuse to ever even think about how I would change things because every bad experience has just made me me. Even her dad talks about not wanting to shield her from life when she was younger. As a parent, you want to do the right thing for your kid, but that's something you don't want to, there's this new term about snowplow parents who just like get all obstacles out of their way. That is how we learn, that's how we grow. And uh, you got to leave those obstacles there for your kids. It's a necessary part of life for them to struggle and to own their struggles and to get through them because that builds confidence and builds strength. And if you can, you should even incorporate the struggle into the art itself. It's so embarrassing that I'm crying. Why am I bawling my eyes out? I thought I was going to use this in a video and now I'm like, no, I'm crying too hard. But I'm... I literally get emails every week from my prodigal sons and daughters saying, Dear Father Bronx, sorry I went MIA. I'm back now. And yes, I wish I had documented the whole sad period. So much gold is lost. Now compare that to Emma Chamberlain in her New York Times interview where she says, Whenever I'm crying, I like weirdly to document it. I like to look back and think, Remember when I was so upset about X, Y, and Z? Well, look at me now. I don't care about that anymore. That could be you. If you start now, the bad stuff is just energy. 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 Remember? And wherever there's energy, it can totally be transformed. Energy. energy. Alchemists have been doing it for years. Witches have been doing it for years. And Emma Chamberlain has been doing it for years also. And she's famous for it now. Emma Chamberlain! How famous? Just go to YouTube and type in an E and her name will come up. Now she has 12 million followers on YouTube? First off, for those who, who don't know, can you explain what, what, what you do? Why do people just love you? I, like, truly don't know. Some people say that it's a YouTube channel about nothing. It's about nothing. <laughs> no story? No, forget the story. You gotta have a story. Look, story or no story, Emma Chamberlain guaranteed her success by being a creativity machine. I was uploading every fucking day. Like, I was uploading every single day during the summer. And by the end of the summer, I had like something like 50 videos. And so I had such a collection already that it was easy. It didn't take as long because I was grinding i mean every day i was like i need to make a video every day and i was like i just want to get as good at this as i can as quickly as fucking possible so i'm just gonna go robot mode and like wait, just wait, wait, wait. you caught that right robot mode that's what you need to do i'm not gonna think i'm just gonna just tunnel vision keep going and like i did that up until probably the last three months in other words she was keeping that intensity for five years straight. Are you ready for that type of commitment? And if you think this was an accident, listen to her read from the journal that she kept in the summer before she started. I'm passionately in love with making videos, but I don't have much footage. This summer, I'm going to make a lot of videos. And yes, you should be journaling everything too. Then I edited from basically nighttime until the morning time, and I didn't go to bed. I pulled an all-nighter. We know how I do. If I wanted to be consistent on YouTube, I had to be constantly working on it 24 seven. And to maintain this pace, she used the artist's secret weapon, exercise. So what does a normal day for you look like? I wake up, I always exercise some way, because if I don't, I'm kind of not a good person throughout the day. And it's not like this is a new thing. She's been doing this since day one. Her fourth vlog called First Time Driving Alone we watch her get her driver's license, drop off her mom, and where does she go after that? 
guess who just drove themselves all the way to the gym safely, soundly, all by themselves? This girl. Okay, so you have the discipline, you have the regimen, but now the question is, what will you create? Dude, it doesn't matter. Get out of your head. Just try things. No one comes out fully formed. I remember when Emma tried cooking. I got this inspiration to start cooking in the new year. And I don't know where it came from. Part of it could be that I only watch cooking videos now on YouTube. That's all I watch. The internet is not so terrible and negative of a place if you're watching cooking videos. Virtually anything else, quite negative. I remember when Emma tried fashion. When did you go viral? So about, about like two or three months after I started. Which I was one? Like, it was this video where I went to the dollar store and I bought a bunch of like random shit and did like a fake haul. It wasn't really fashion, but it was fun. Next, I got something that I think is extremely relevant to the times right now. If you know anything about hair extensions, they're really expensive. I went to the dollar store and they hooked me up. Hello? I mean, yes. People are spending all this money on freaking hair extensions when they can literally go to the dollar store and get this thing. It has a built-in braid on the top. That is so cute. And you know it. God, I'm living for this. Wow. Like after two weeks, it had like half a million views or something. And remember that time she tried to remake a $450 Gucci shirt? Look at it. It has freaking personality. It's a little bit wonky, but like it has personality and it has a soul. And it was created by yours truly. So that just makes it 10 times freaking doper. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. <laughs> or that unfortunate time she tried the makeup tutorial thing. She had to take that one down because of, um... Blackface. I'm probably gonna break out from this. We're gonna be using the Sassy and Chic BB Beauty Cream in the shade Dark. That was an accident. I forgot to check what shade I would be, and I am definitely not dark, so we will see how that goes. Oh my god. It kind of looks like I'm rubbing pudding on my face. Oh, it smells like <laughs> drugs. I like don't know how to pick out my shade. Like, how the f was I supposed to know how to do that? I didn't realize that it was gonna be so dark. Ugh, I'm a contour queen. Perfect. Oh my god, actually, my cheekbones do look a little bit more chiseled, though. And it was through that trial and error that she ended up finding her true art form, editing. My editing style when I first sort of started becoming known on the internet a little bit was super fast-paced, super crazy, like, you know, zooming in, zooming out, you know, like, jump cut, jump cut, like crazy speed, right? Because that's kind of what kept people's attention. And the other thing that she would do, adding post-production commentary in the middle of her own videos. Okay, so number one, at the beginning of this video, I am so drained and tired that I seem like a corpse. Wanna let you know that it gets better, but I had to leave it in because it's the intro of my video. I don't think it's physically possible to be more annoying than we were in those clips. I have this weird phobia of like leaving tampons in and like not remembering to take- And suddenly every teenage girl on YouTube was trying to be Emma Chamberlain. What would Emma Chamberlain do? No, no, Google it. There's literally thousands of videos where people have editing like Emma Chamberlain right there in the title. They don't even try to hide it. I thought it would be a fun little challenge to try and follow the format of our Queen Emma Chambies vlogs. So enjoy a nice downgraded rendition of that. And you know what all these videos have in common? They all suck. Because while it may be true that her art is editing, these copycats are all missing the point. Her even bigger art is her facility with words. Talking, interviewing, conversating, and most of all, storytelling. This girl is a storytelling genius. Look, she has a podcast with a million followers. You can't even see her face or lose yourself in the editing. And it's still interesting. Why? She could hold your attention with words. If all goes as planned, I will be the first person to actually die from a bleeding pimple. As you can see, I'm profusely bleeding from my forehead right now. I'm losing a lot of blood. I'm lightheaded. I think that the end is near. This vlog might end here, debatable, because I might die from this. Please, I'm gonna start a GoFundMe down below to help pay for reparations and the doctor bills that it will take to heal this injury. Thank you so much for being understanding. My eyebrow looks like absolute it, you know, there's pros and cons to the situation. Pros, I might be in a Guinness Book of World Records. Cons, I'm dead. The video that got me to follow her 
She's just telling the story of her and her dad running to a gate at the airport. Nothing matters to me except for getting on this flight. We have two minutes to get there. It's all or nothing right now. Every ounce of energy I had, I was going to get on that freaking plane if it was the last thing I did in my life. I was literally going to walk out onto the tarmac and hold onto the freaking airplane wing until they noticed me and let me on the plane. This is not sped up, by the way. We're running through the F gates. It's like F1, F2, F3, F4. Then there's a food court. Storytelling, editing, and just plain being yourself. I love how creative she is. She really like brought like a new style, just completely being yourself to YouTube, and it was just so cool. Like a lot of YouTubers and creators you see online, they get their self like perfectly ready, you know, makeup done, hair did, and she will just roll out of bed and be like undone, hoodie on. Emma Chamberlain was just doubling down on herself. That's what I want for you. But that doesn't mean copying what she did. When she was doing all that stuff, she wasn't copying anyone. It means copying the energy the essence of the authentic place that she was coming from so that you can find your own light. It means asking yourself what's natural and easy for me to do that no one else could do without faking it. Maybe it's time for you to zig while everyone else is zagging. It feels like everything's already been done. We've played the game of pretending that we all have perfect lives. That kind of came and went because very quickly everybody realized how easy it is to fake a perfect life. And then it was all about people being like funny and like honest about their real lives on social media. The style that she pioneered. But then even that found a way to become kind of fake in a way because then people were faking these like real moments. Like they were faking a relatable life. Copycats always ruin it for everybody. I really think that the only thing that has stood the test of time is content in general that's creative in some way. Maybe that's music. Maybe that's art. Maybe that's clothing. Maybe that's photography. Things like that stand the test of time. Sure. Emma Chamberlain makes content for a living. It's crazy to me how not artistically inclined I am. It blows my mind. Like, my own father is an artist. That is his passion in life. That is his job. And, like, that's what fucking happens when I try to draw. Like, I have no artistic instinct. I'm not good at drawing. I'm not good at painting. I'm not good at playing drums. But you know what she's made that is a work of art? Her life. I mean, look at her body of work as a whole. Who's not going to call that art? I have no problem imagining the collection of Emma Chamberlain's first five years of vlogging being in the museum one day. I think Andy Warhol would have loved her. She's definitely an artist. And you know what? The best kind of artist. An artist with a message. My main goal and my main message has always been about beauty being so much more than anything that's happening out here. It is so much more than that. And changing people's perspectives on what beauty is, is something that I needed when I was younger. And I really hope that I can spread that to whoever wants to listen. In my ideal world, at a certain point, the internet will get to a place where it's no bullshit. Nobody can fake their lives anymore on the internet. Everybody will see right through it. The internet celebrities will kind of lose their allure. And instead of the internet being this superficial, boring kind of place? What if social media became a place that was used with more intention? When people post, they post with intention. You know, it would be cool to see people start using social media in more meaningful and impactful ways rather than just everybody dumping everything on the internet all day, every day. I, I would love to see the shift happen in social media being used more intentionally and people returning back to living in the moment again.